Hey guys, welcome to another video. Welcome to another daydream. Thank you for watching, liking, and subscribing. So in this video, I just wanted to talk about um, my tea and suspension preparation more than anything else. Because there's a lot of hurdles, a lot of pitfalls where you could trip over. As far as I'm aware, nobody else has installed the whole kit. And then because my car is modified quite a bit as well on the rear end, there's one or two issues that I'm sort of um, coming across. And I just want to generally talk about these things, how to get your rear um, shocks prepared, what I did to install my um, rear springs, and, uh, and, and generally where I think the sticking points might be and where I'm stuck. I was hoping, I was hoping that these would be ready but then there's it, quite a lot so I just want to do it step by step and to be honest Tien's uh, I still call them Tien because T-E-I-N T-N Tien I don't know but Tien is what I call them um, to be honest their instructions are pretty good so uh, um, yeah um, I've been reading them a lot and trying to understand them and it's been going fairly fairly well so what do we have We have our, so th this is the front. To be honest, you don't need to do much to the front. One of the confusions I still have with the Flex Z's is do I need to install the ED ED EDFC strut kit? So, because on, on this model, what will happen is um, the rears, the motors mount directly to the top. So you take this adjustment screw out and you mount the motors on the top as per the instructions in here which again i'll do a video on there's some complexities to go with that and some of the things i don't understand so i'll talk about those and here we use the, the extension kit and again the instructions are in there um, and, and we just we just use the use this kit on the top and it does what it needs to do now what i don't know is if i install this kit do i need to install the strut kit but as a precaution I think I'm going to do it anyway because um, what, the last thing I want is to install everything and then I find that I needed to do it because what happens is I think um, as these spin because these tend to the, the, the pipe the, the shaft that everything mounts to spins as well and uh, that can have an issue but I think if you install the extension kit you shouldn't but if you install the motors directly on top of it it will be an issue because the wires will wrap around the motor themselves and that's a problem but then that got me to think that because i'm mounting the motors directly on the top here wouldn't that happen on the rears so the motor um so the wire will wrap around itself again i'm not sure um i, I probably need to seek some advice maybe contact tian but uh, but that's one of the challenges that i've been thinking about quite a lot the other thing I've got these Steeda billet rear shock mounts. Uh, I thought about using them, but I've decided against using them. I am not gonna use them, simply because the kit has been designed to work with OEM mounts. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do. So if you've noticed, these two look different, right? So that's because this one's almost prepared, ready to take the EDFC motor, and this is not, and I did that, and that's, sort of what I wanted to talk to you about in terms of preparation. And I'll do another install video of the rears with the EDFC, uh, maybe later on. Or, actually no, I'll just tell you how to do that right now. It, it cuts down a video. So for this, I'll get this out here. Get this here. So this is how you would get it from factory right so it will just have this this bumper on there this collar and this nut That's a bit tight. There you go. and what you need to do is follow the instructions on page 31 and I've just been sort of figuring out what to do and you have to use some OEM parts now what I didn't want to do is I didn't want to take my old suspension, well, well, my current suspension set are off to use the OE parts, which I had to use on it, um, and then not be able to drive the car. So I had to go onto the Ford website and get some parts. And what are the parts? They are these. 
So I got a new bump stop. So this is uh, part number, there you go. Hope you guys can see that. FR3Z 5K570C. So I got this from Tesco Parts. I got two of those. And then I also got a new dust cover which is required, which is FZG, sorry, F2GZ 18159A1X. So these are, so you, you will need to each of those and I'll, t and I'll tell you why so so once you have those and I'm just gonna take that off and then yeah the other thing I did was I bought some new shock mounts as well oh yes shock mounts for the rear so again two two of those and this is your part number FR3Z 18A161-D so I got these from Tasker because Rock Auto didn't have them. And I got these from Rock Auto because they had them. And I used a 5% discount code, which is available readily online to make sure you do and save some, save some money. So once you have all of that, you can start to assemble this, this uh, rear shock. And what you have to do is, and I'll dismantle this now. So if I take this off, you will know exactly what it is I have to do. So that probably won't come out now, but yeah, that's not gonna come out. Okay, I'll show you anyway. So to be able to get it right and follow the instructions which I found they're pretty clear, but I didn't quite understand them at first. So, so this this should clarify everything. So once you have this part, which is the factory mount, you have to cut this from the bottom. And I think they say uh, it's 60 millimeters. So it's about that much. And which is what's left over here. So you can see, so you, I use the coping saw with a fine tooth um, to cut that off. And that gives you um, the leftover bit which is just here then they want you to get the dust cover or dust shield and take 150 millimeters off the bottom of that as well so you do that and then you're left with basically this right once you have that then you put your bit that you've cut off in here so it looks like this and then once you have that you remove the collar, you remove the nut, first you slide on the tin dust guard, so that just goes on there like so, and then you put this on, like that, right, fairly simple, but it just it caught me a little off guard because I didn't realize I'd be using OEM parts because I just didn't understand why they would use this. And the reason why they've used this actually is not quite clear now that I've done it, is because they want this to sit inside there nicely. Yeah. So there isn't too much movement from here basically. So it, it gives us some support. So then you would put the collar on, right? And then you would put this on. It will just go on like so then what you have to do is obviously tighten this and I so this is a 14 millimeter nut it's already nylock so you don't need to use thread locker on it and then once you've tightened it I think it's uh, let me just read this very quickly 24.5 Newton meters so it's not a lot of torque but the problem is to get there you will have to use the eight millimeter spanner to hold on to this flat, which means I need a crow's foot attachment, which will allow me to tighten this um, without the shaft spinning. Don't use an impact gun, don't use anything like that, please. And then this shaft will be ready, or this shock will be ready to install without the EDFC kit, okay? 
I'll do another video on the EFC stuff because that's that's the a little bit more complex there's a few more steps to it and you have to do that right and again I'm not sure because if I keep if I just mount the motor on here my worry is that again it will just spin on the top of this and, I, and I'm not I'm not I'm just not sure maybe it's not an issue because obviously the real uh, rear wheel doesn't have any steering so the shop just maybe just goes up and down and that's why they've not done it whereas for the front because obviously you have steering so the the shaft inside the shock will spin and that's what calls the mo causes the motor to wrap the cable around itself so again I, I, I just don't know um, so this is a question I have for them but as it is this is now ready to be mounted now the problem I've run, out, run into again going forward um, is obviously I'm waiting for my crow's feet so I can torque the nut once that's torqued we're good that's not an issue right I can install the EDFC again that's not an issue can be done the problem I have is this you see this lip here now if you if you've done modifications to your car particularly the rear I have the aftermarket DSS half shafts uh, which are thicker and if you already have something like I don't know the Ford racing track performance suspension which is what I do you'll realize that the clearance that you have to the CV boots and the shock are actually very, very tight. You're literally talking like, I don't know, um, like less than a quarter, way less than a quarter of an inch uh, for my American friends. And you're looking at probably like five, six millimeters. Now this takes that away. So the problem you will have is that these, this will come into contact with the CV boot and, and rip it. So what I have to do on top of that, and again, I've had to sort of figure this out as I did the uh, spring attachment. I was like, this, this can't be right. And I just generally placed the shock next to the factory shock and it, well, to the, the current shock and 100% it's gonna touch. And then what I've had to do is um, I've had to buy some new clips. So I've got some high quality um, whatever they call what it, boot clips they usually just call boot clips and, and a tool to be able to do that don't skimp out on these these were like 15 or 16 pounds for a pack um, but they're actually really thick they're rounded they're very well made and they're not going to eat into your CV boot they're actually at the name brand like Jubilee clips so they're the ones who, who made it so don't skimp out on these because it'll lead to a bigger headache down the road so I have to do that as well you, you, now you sort of begin to understand why it's becoming a bit of a challenge so the steps I need to take number one I've already taken so the springs are on that alone is a bit of an issue if you've got a lot of bracing on uh, to your sub uh, to your independent rear suspension um, you will find that you know it's not easy to just lower the cradle and slip the strings out so I'm, I'm lucky enough that I have a, have a really good friend who's a master tech at Ford I've mentioned him in a few of my other videos um, who who has a special tool and this is a heavy duty tool it comes in like three parts so what happens is basically um, so these are my old old springs what happens is it's in three parts it has a plate that goes in here and a plate that goes in here and then you put like a shaft in through the hole of the lower control arm and sort of hook it into those two plates and then uh, what you call it uh, you tighten the screw and it starts to compress the spring and then you tighten it tighten it tighten it compresses the spring and then you're able to take it out without having to um, undo undo anything but that that, that that was still a bit of a pain uh, but we got it done it is doable so you don't have to mess with that if you if that is an issue but if you can't then you know something like a video from CJ Pony Parts, LMR, American Muscle, I'm sure there's loads out there, is what you'll have to follow. You'll have to lower the cradle for which you'll need to support it. And then, uh, then yeah, and then just slip it out. That just seemed like too much work for us to do. So <clears throat> we went with that tool and, and it went reasonably well. Just a note of caution for, for that is uh, for the collar at the top, 
um, which allows the the height adjustability. Um, uh, I think the Tian recommend 49 millimeters um, from the top to the from the top collar of the collar to the top of the uh, the, the adjustment collar. Adjustment collar. Uh, and what I found was they give you some double sided tape. And to be honest, where is that? There it is. They give you some double sided tape and to, and that's for putting on top of the collar where it will then go on the on onto the body or onto the chassis. Onto the chassis. Um, so so where basically you have this stuff um, go onto the onto the chassis. So um, and and I, I I didn't understand why they wanted it, um, but when the time came to sort of um, uh, loosen and tighten the collar, uh, the the adjustment the collar things like these ones basically, like these on the on the on the collars on the on the rear, uh, rear springs, um, the bit that they screw around was spinning as well. So I think that's why they had the double sided tape. I don't think it's enough so the way I had to do it I had to spin the top one right to the top and then uh, turn the bottom one all the way <clears throat> but but I got it done it was it was fine it wasn't a huge issue but I didn't use the double-sided tape so would I have used it if I had if I could do it again no not really I don't think it will prevent you prevent the the screw part of that adjustment collar uh, from spinning around the body so but it's up to you if you uh, if you want to do that aside from that I know it's a lot to take in I've, I've been figuring this out on my own and it's it's been quite challenging I just hope I can get the CV boot adjusted enough so what I'm gonna have to do basically is uh, so let's say if this is let me just get something let's say if this is my half shaft this is the wheel and this is where the CV boot is and this is where the um, shock is let me see this is where the shock is i'm probably just going to move the cv boot forward so it just completely clears it if that doesn't work i'm going to stretch it so it just again the idea being i need to reduce the diameter or get it away so we'll see we'll see what works and then i've got the right stuff to be able to sort all of that out um yeah that's it so a lot to take in um, I hope you find this useful if you go for this upgrade. I think the system is going to be superb when it's on in terms of suspension, uh, particularly the EDFC to be able to uh, adjust the stiffness on the fly, front, rear, independent. I, I can't wait for that and, and for it to be automatically done as well. I've been looking into um, where I'm going to tie it into the uh, into the into the electric so I need to find accessory power some main power where I'm gonna uh, uh, stick the drivers GPS a lot to do but as I figure it out I'll tell you guys if you found this useful uh, maybe this has put you off buying this I've got no horse in this race I don't care I've got no brand loyalty to anybody um, then then you know so be it it's, it's your choice but I'm going to persevere. I think the benefits of getting this thing on are going to speak for themselves uh, when I'm driving around. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe. Share with other people who are thinking about this. And uh, I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.